Welcome back to Kai's Hobbies. A friend of mine and I decided that we wanted to get into Warhammer Kill Team because we decided that we never wanted to have any money ever again. So I went ahead and picked up the Kill Team starter set, which is a cool set. I think it's actually a really great deal, speaking of money. Um, comes with two Kill Teams, everything you need to go, blah, 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 and a bunch of terrain. The terrain is super cool, super detailed, and there's a ton of it. So you definitely want to paint it and have it looking cool on your table, but that's a lot of terrain. So I'm going to show you how I speed painted it uh, to get it, you know, tabletop ready, as it will be called. So it looks cool while you're gaming with it. I'll show you two steps. So the first one is about an hour and a half, and it gets it to, again, like what I would call tabletop ready standard. And then if you put about another, about that again, maybe another hour and a half into it, you end up with what I have here and what you probably just saw. Let's just go ahead and hop right into it. First, you're gonna to wanna to prime everything black. I used Citadel spray primer. It's very expensive, but man, does it lay nice. And two dry brushes, two separate ones for the two colors that you're gonna need. I'm using Runefang Steel and Retributor Armor, but you can use any silver or gold. I like uh, dark, little more coppery gold. And get ready to dry brush. The next step is to go ahead and pick this up and start dry brushing and realize you did an absolutely terrible job gluing. Then fix that and come back to actually get started. I start a little heavy here and, and rub some more off, but that's okay. I think it's better in this case to do it too much than too little. I think it looks better that way. But that's a little opinion based and, and your results will vary. I'm doing all the pipes and everything around the edges, but avoiding the metal trim around the flat spaces and the actual flat spaces themselves. And I just go around the whole piece. Let's speed up through this really quick. You don't need to see the whole thing. While doing this, I want to say sorry about the pretty poor autofocus in this video. Got a little lazy and just threw the camera on autofocus instead of manual, and you really can't trust this Lumix autofocus in video. Great for photos, terrible in video. We're just wrapping up with the silver here and you can see just how easy that was to add so much depth to this piece and to make it look like it's actually made of metal and not some black plastic. So let's grab our gold with our second dry brush here. You could really use the same one if you wanted to, but I like to start fresh. It's gonna be a little bit of a heavier dry brush. So we're gonna have a little bit more paint on this than you maybe normally would with a dry brush. And we're gonna start with the trim around the flat spots. It doesn't matter if you get any on the flat spots because we are just gonna cover the whole flat spot anyway. And if you get any on the silver parts, that's okay too because we are actually gonna go back and add some detail on the silver with the gold anyway. Once you've got those sections done on the piece, we're gonna go around and just selectively add some gold dry brush to all the little trinkets and wires and flourishes around here. And this is just gonna add a lot of detail to it, make the piece a lot more interesting to look at. You can go overboard with this, but it's not really a big deal. You just grab the silver and go over it if you don't like it. Keep going until you finish up at the top. Then you have a piece that looks like this. And this is how I originally was going to leave mine. And I think it's 
totally tabletop ready, but for just a little bit more time, you can add a third color. I'm using sanguine base here, but you can use whatever you want. And we're gonna brush this onto the flat areas. If you make any mistakes, like I do right here, just wipe it off with your finger and move on. And you just wanna edge along. This is a little bit more precise than what we've been doing, but you also don't have to be that crazy accurate with it. This is, you know, factory equipment or something, and it's, it's not the most beautiful stuff in the world. It probably wasn't painted that nice to begin with. You have to kind of keep yourself in that mindset. And if you try to make this perfect, it could take you a very, very long time. Because you will have to do a few coats on this to get it to cover well, depending on what color you pick. Small areas like this corner here, you're gonna have to get a little bit more detail oriented brush and just fill those spots in. And while I'm doing this, I just kind of went around and edged around all the other spots that I knew I wanted to leave that gold color. By the time you're done with your first round, if you go back to the beginning, it'll be dry enough for you to start your second coat. And as you can see, it's already carving a lot better and you're getting a much more rich color. I did two coats on mine just because I wanted to get this done with and get to playing, but really it needed a third, maybe a fourth coat. So use your discretion. Once you're done and view this on the table, it's gonna look really nice and you're gonna be really happy that you put the time into this and you're gonna be really happy that you only spent an hour and a half, maybe three hours doing this for such an impactful result. I found once we started playing, all the imperfections on the terrain really just fell into the background because we were so focused on the game. So you don't have to worry about making everything perfect. That's definitely for sure. I hope you guys liked this video and found it useful. If you did, consider subscribing. I'm going to be making more content and uploading it to this channel. A mix of diorama building, warhammer building, scale stuff, all kinds of hobby things. Thanks for watching.